Hey comrades, so this is gonna be a little vlog update. I kinda about to finish my 36 day overland series and I'm about to start my second Baja series and there has been a little bit of confusion uh, of people seeing different videos, different timelines, uh, when happened what, like certain parts of my setup exist, uh, like don't exist anymore uh, or vice versa. So I thought I would do a little uh, timeline video sort of. And I'm here at the uh, Harrison Lake, new spot I discovered. I've kind of been cruising by it all these years, but apparently there's this nice beach. And I just did a major risk and uh, I may or may not regret it. as you arrive at this beach this is just the end, northern end of uh, Harrison Lake and uh, there's some puddles springtime uh, the puddle can get up higher than my truck front over there higher than the hood so it's kind of seasonal how to get here uh, I've been passing through here many times but kind of disregarded that little path there's some campers over there and it seemed like oh it's shallow so I did, uh, uh, I was looking for a fishing spot so I can just go on the roof, deploy fishing rod from the roof and kind of chill there and uh, there is some deep spots over there and here it's kind of shallow, I'm like hey how about I do a river crossing over there to this patch of land right here and then as I crossed it and I saw that it's kind of shallow here I'm like how about I come from here to over here and over there it seemed shallow as well however and i kind of like i wasn't sure if it's rocky ground here it was hard to see over there it is so i kind of accelerated obviously right i'm afraid to bog down or something in the water and uh the water doesn't seem like it's too deep here but or maybe due to my acceleration i around here halfway i started seeing the water going up to my hood not up to my hood over my hood and I'm like, oh shit, shit, shit. And I kind of pressed the pedal even more. And maybe that's actually uh, was wrong thing to do. So the water went up to here. I, like I saw in a window water being splashing over here. And uh, you know, my truck is high. Yeah, like, that's my height, that's the hood. That's high. And the water was here, I was like, oh shit. Yeah, you would think, oh, I have snorkel, right? No, this snorkel, it's not water uh, uh, waterproof. Uh, I still have a little hole in uh, air intake. Uh, it was never meant for water crossing because I have all the electronics, computer chips, uh, like all that, you know, on the level of battery, kind of, that if you get that soaked, you're done, right? It doesn't matter if you have snorkel or not. In order to make the rig properly watertight, you, you need to ice it isolate all this stuff you know uh, make it waterproof and it was never intent so as i came to the shore just now i'm like oh shit 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 i'm just letting the truck run because uh as i came as you can see there's still uh, dripping going on and actually this plastic thing detached i'm not sure where it was i think it was like here somewhere somehow so I'm gonna have to retouch it again just now uh, after it dries up a little bit so I'm running the track just so everything in the hood kind of dries off because uh, the water did go in so that's very sketchy like the only reason I crossed is I, I thought it's shallow uh, maybe it's just my acceleration but at the same time you don't want to slow down right in the river crossings uh, you uh, you need to keep momentum the moment you start going too slow that's where water starts to actually get in get inside get in like in, inside places it's it's uh, it's always the fine balance when we river crossing uh 
and what just happened now I certainly never went as deep as to see water on my hood uh, that never happened before so I'm sketched out right now because I still need to get out of here like sure I could camp right now here uh, but I still need to get out and I'm just thinking now maybe uh, I should try to cross this right now while there are campers still right because if I'm gonna camp here and leave last day when people leave it's you know gonna be no people uh, I don't know but for now I'm just gonna let the thing dry out uh, it was dangerously close how wet things were around the uh, S-Pod and because under S-Pod it's actually the chips all the fuses and stuff is like right under so okay food popped basically the water was uh, my S-Pod has cover of water the battery here and you can still kind of see you know a little bit of water here uh, there is water on the food here uh, on the engine cover um, yeah, it, it was it was very wet inside. You can still see the uh, air intake. Still got some water here. Uh, once 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 it dries up here, I actually wanna pop the air intake here and just see just see where if there is water on the bottom or if water got in at all. Uh, but it doesn't matter because you know the actual thing halfway here, right, the pipe, so be fine if it was all like completely submerged for a while that would be an issue um, uh, plus I didn't clean my filter since Baja since before Baja last year so basically since before last October yeah about it's yeah so right now it's October 2019 and filter wasn't clean for a year and I bet it's just gonna be a couple of taps and that's it that's what that type of snorkel does for you pre-filter one right where it's propeller checks things out it's not like the snake version where it's still like you know it's gonna get more dusting compared to this version you know that uh, sort of military kind of hoop uh, mushroom uh, cap oh let's see here I did pick up some wood in a way actually uh, I camped uh, I camped by another river somewhere in there uh, before and this morning I spent a little bit of time this is from two different locations picked up some of these uh, bullets uh, this is different kind this is not kin bullet uh, this one kind of seems like it right the type of cap and it's actually hopefully there's no worms inside it looks very pristine nice but all these types here at Harrison Lake I'm not sure what they are uh, it's not orange under underneath so that means it's not poisonous out of this variety there's only one type here uh, out of yeah uh, that's you know poisonous it's not you you're not gonna die but you're not gonna feel great uh, uh, so these are definitely edible but there may not be the great tasting ones uh, I'll need to pop the book but all of them are exactly the same type here and they have kind of like this uh, sort of uh, mossy not mossy but uh, the cap is not smooth like it's almost like little hairs or something um, but yeah because it's not stripes it's all it's all good um, yeah that's potential dinner of some potatoes from last weekend i was just checking a couple of new uh, camp places like i've cruised here before but never actually camped at those places i'm like oh let's check it out again maybe like on the side of the road pick some mushrooms and it's exactly what i was doing with mushrooms are from like probably 10 different little spots or stops that I did uh, and on some beach I saw tons of wood so I, I don't have chainsaw I don't do campfires often enough to have chainsaw and I don't want to spend money or whatever I just have an axe and it kind of works for me uh, and you know whenever I can pick wood and stuff from like just to the shore or whatever I just do that but I picked a bunch of wood and uh, this is actually how I use my roof many times already before i did it quite a few times storing wood protopacks are empty right now because i'm just camping it's not one trip whatever i don't need fuel it's just just here uh but yeah tons of big logs here one big one there kind of tucked it against the box uh my trash bag is always here now and it worked on uh, my last month trip in uh, vancouver island uh, just this august 2019 so that series is going to be happening after the 
uh, Return to Baja series that's gonna start like in a week or two and uh, yeah this setup worked and I already carried wood like this just a ratchet strap because I have these things here right that's that's what holds my box in place a bunch of these kind of hooks mounted to the mesh like so the box doesn't move at all four ways and I can still use these points to do another ratchet straps if I want to yeah so it's, uh, it's holding well it's not gonna go anywhere so I got tons of woods of wood here and potentially can use that and that and that if I stay here to camp it right in this spot but I'm still kind of thinking uh, maybe I should relocate to this little patch of land just because crossing that water over there it's actually shallow here uh, yeah maybe on the way out I should go a little slower and that should fix it for me I'm not sure like looking at it, it like from here it looks so shallow no misleading cheers guys let's get back to timeline so 36 day overland the series that I just finished uh, it's basically this video is right after the last episode of it uh, was my first overland trip like I've done uh, uh, in my Kia Sorento prior to this car that I had only for about maybe eight months I've done 18 states road trip like all the national parks you know uh, western half uh, went to Louisiana all that two months with a girl and after that I came back got a truck I was jealous in Louisiana of people uh, uh, you know camping with RVs having air conditioners I thought oh I'll just buy like one of those trailers 18 feet 19 feet just so I have AC or whatever take it to parks uh, and then the, the tour it took a completely different turn uh, like after a lift and this and that it just started going on its own different spiral and uh, yeah there's no way I would tow anything right now I don't want to you can't get anywhere with that stuff so uh, I was very inexperienced before and before driving basically uh, I went on that 18 state road trip in Kia while I still had a new driver uh, sign thing on my car because uh, uh, I've been driving cars in general uh, since four years ago that's it it just so happened I used to be I used to join people camping here and there in my youth and so on uh, until kind of everyone stopped doing it kids and all that maybe that's what sort of pushed me to start driving uh, also I went through divorce uh, so that's maybe that made the life crisis thing kind of combined I don't know uh, but as soon as I started driving I'm like oh I want to go camping again kind of like what I we used to do when we were younger uh, except no one does anything now uh, and right away I started bumping into issues of you know my Kia Sorento not being able to go here or here or here and that was the thinking oh I'll get truck you know it's capable right away uh, again was noob I didn't know what truck I, I didn't know anything at that time uh, uh, you know the requirements that I want uh, for the truck right completely new so uh, you know going back I probably would have gotten a slightly different version of the truck this and that and build this stuff on top and actually where I am right now maybe I wouldn't have gotten it all together and saved up for some expedition rig you know like a bigger one uh, for like Han K plus whatever uh, but anyway what happened happened I still love this rig it's uh, I, I I absolutely love it for what I do right now which is a uh, month two month bursts kind of overlanding trips or just camping or whatever like like so right now long weekend uh, it's perfect for that no problem it's not too big it's not too it has enough uh, cargo space for all kinds of stuff it's like mini a little mini apartment I just can't stand up um, but in the future I want a rig out of which I want to live uh, and no and still be somewhat stealthy so uh, and actually be more powerful like actually bigger platform than uh, 3500 and so on uh, so anyway back to that series so completely new uh, in Kia Sorento yeah sure I did some dirt roads this and that pretty much every state on that trip but uh, there is no prior experience so that whole trip through 30 or so trails 36 day overland uh, was to be intense testing rig capabilities and my capabilities 
I've been uh, around that time watching, that was 2017, around that time watching a lot of Overland videos like Expedition Overland, this and that, but again, those guys are sponsored through the roof uh, at that time already, so it's like those guys don't really represent the regular crowd of people. So it's a little bit sometimes hard to relate because, uh, you know, many normal people can't afford all these toys and giant garages and all this swag they get. Um, uh, and I kind of faded away from that and started watching someone like uh, uh, Pierre, Edward White, you know, African overlander, Ronnie Dachau, uh, you know, more down to earth kind of guys. So, um, and actually the guys that tend to do things solo, uh, not in these giant caravans. I'm not interested in caravans. I do it once in a while with people, but I just like to, you know, be by myself, get out, do my thing, whatever. You know, no compromises as to what you want to do. Don't like the sport, want to take off, boom, you're gone, right? Close the lead, that's as much setup there is. Maybe hook up a few things so they don't uh, wobble around, and off you go. Uh, so, uh, that so that 36 day overland series definitely was a test of my uh, skills uh, which I had none before uh, and you guys probably saw some situations some people like when I got stuck SOS moment there was some hate and comments uh, I noticed uh, uh, cigarette buds and blah all that stuff and people you know those super extreme uh, environmentalist advocates uh, of course they, they they, they like to make sure they're visible with their comments, uh, you know. I'm pretty sure if uh, someone would have uh, polluted, left some garbage and uh, shot it in the video and then after uh, hurt themselves or broke the leg, this type of people would still comment, karma, you know, that kind of stuff. So I was green, yeah, I wasn't really paying attention. Plus, when you're in stress situation, uh, you're just not thinking straight. Both the situation itself or if you're, I don't know, leaving some napkins on the ground or throwing buds. And actually, um, yeah, at that trip, yeah, I wasn't doing that back in a day. Uh, nowadays, yeah, I may throw buds around my campground or even leave bottle cans and, uh, you know. But before I leave, I pick all this stuff up, right? Like I go around my whole camp area, wherever I was hanging out and just I, I clean up to myself. Uh, but I don't have to like go every time and put nicely tidily you know things in the garbage bag and that's the thing people jump to conclusions and so on if i didn't mention some stuff in there that oh ranger will came back to pick up my napkins that i left i may as well not have mentioned it and <laughs> you wouldn't even know about it but i specifically mentioned it because uh, i wanted to illustrate the newbishness at that time right that you're not kind of uh, taking care of stuff you leave behind and that's to some degree I was doing uh, well I wasn't really doing that it was that stress situation where uh, I just totally wasn't that was like completely in the background somewhere completely unaware you know uh, getting the rig out was a priority everything else was just didn't exist I uh, definitely tested my skills that trip and uh, uh, I faced many challenges couldn't possibly imagine before uh, and after facing them actually I realized that I'm more scenic overlander than rock crawling overlander because uh, in order to be rock crawling overlander you need uh, not rock crawler but like hardcore kind of thing you you need money every time you break every time stuff happens these things cost a lot and uh, what many people don't realize on your little uh, on little SUVs or little Jeeps things cost twice less money than on full-size trucks you know that bumper for a jeep same thing full grill blah w would cost half the price everything's half basically when it comes to full-size trucks it's very expensive when things break everything's more massive everything's heavier everything bulkier heavier to ship and so on and so on um, you know just my drive shaft in the rear there is like uh, probably four times the uh, diameter of a jeep drive shaft so that just says it all uh, same as my frontal it's like twice or three times you know thicker um, but it's also custom one so yeah so, so after this trip I realized I don't want to put my vehicle through uh, some of the dangerous uh, spots that I encountered situations 
and uh, I realized, well, I, I need to be more, just overall, pay more attention to situations, uh, to where I go, uh, the kind of research I do, you know, keep in mind that uh, my vehicle is loaded, it's not a rock crawler, because uh, one, like, if you have an overland rig, it can possibly be a uh, and full off-roader rig because overland rig means you're taking it's not about weekend trips if you're just week i don't know like me right now going camping on the weekends this is not overlanding it's just doesn't matter how off-road it is it's just camping it's just camping weekend trip but that's that's about it that's as, as far as it goes when you're overlanding doesn't matter big truck little uh, uh mitsubishi uh, delica or wh whatever your rig it's distances, it's time frames, it's weeks and weeks being living out of a car. Uh, you know, sometimes it's being completely different countries, several borders away from yours, or different continent altogether. Um, this is the overlanding. Is uh, in my um, in my view, what defines overlanding primarily is time you're spending on that trip. If it's a couple of weeks, you pack lightly, you know, you, you're gonna return soon back home. If you're the, planning to be on the road for like two, three months, that means you gotta pack more stuff. If you're thinking, oh, you know what, at that place, likely over there somewhere, I'm probably gonna fish, I'm probably gonna crab. That means you gotta pack that, get some crab trap, this and that. Oh, I'm going to unknown area, I'm not sure what's going on there tons of fuel because if it's just one jerry can it's not really gonna do you any good oh yeah it, it will give you like maybe 15 more miles to go as yay that's not really gonna save it um, so you just pack more stuff more tools more everything your rig becomes heavy uh, and uh, even if you have the whole shebang let's say I have this truck and there is another truck that is a rock crawler truck he's got a winch full on bumper like this nine inch lift like me 35 tires uh, probably let's say even uh, well I don't have front lockers let's say he's got front lockers uh, custom drive shaft uh, you know light bars all that stuff uh, that's all he needs to do rock crawling maybe he has a little tent in the back just to sleep uh, kind of thing some water and that's it uh, I have wooden platform underneath it's all tools and pantry right the roof rack uh, I lost in Mexico on my first trip. I came back. I'm like, yes, it's gonna be heavier. I want one, but I'll never lose again. So it's built on endoskeleton inside canopy. It doesn't seem like it, but that thing is heavy. It's like 600 pounds, so almost 300 kilos. The whole roof plus the skeleton inside. Uh, but it's all steel. Uh, cheaper price, obviously, than uh, if it wasn't uh, from aluminum. And but it's also stronger. It's like I can probably knock trees with that thing, and nothing's gonna budge. Um, and I can load weights, I don't, like I sit very, it doesn't matter. So overall it's just, and I'm, you know, when I'm on a trip I have tons of clothing, tons of water, tons of everything. By that time, even if you compare the same rigs, overland rig is probably, you know, times and a half, two times heavier than that ro rock crawler rig with the uh, same mechanical setup. Uh, that guy, more likely to just be fine crawling you you're overweight you can probably still do those things but the more you do them the more uh, chances you're gonna break some stuff out uh, because you know your vehicle your Jeep whatever is over likely up to GVRW up to GVWR rating or over so your vehicle is on the, co constantly under stress uh, under more stress so you gotta keep that in mind and uh, you know tread gently like yeah I, I, I'm sure I can cross some river here this and that but I don't do it every weekend just because I want to keep my expenses low and that's kind of a thing I realized after that trip is like I want to be more in cool places but not too challenging so as not as to keep expenses low uh, then you know that was uh, the, that was August that trip and uh, the reason I only now finished it because it was first trip I used GoPro at that time not with awesome camera uh, uh, my audio suffered a lot on this trip it was crappy microphone not this one uh, 
the video quality, video settings I used, everything was bad, very bad. So it took me forever to do first 10 episodes when I came back. Uh, I was also new at editing. Uh, and whatever you guys saw in episodes of that series, even just recent stuff I released, even though when you hear bad sound in some places, this is after heavy, heavy, heavy audio manipulation. The original sound, the original clicks and noises and things and uh, interferences were completely unlistenable. I couldn't possibly publish, uh, you know, that kind of quality on the web. It was hard for me even sometimes to understand what I'm saying. So it was very involving process uh, in the beginning. Uh, each episode would take up to like 25, 30 hours to try to deal with all these issues. And that's why I abandoned that series after 10 episodes. And uh, by then I got this camera. Uh, well, no, actually I went to the first Baja trip on Christmas, the same year, 2017. Uh, learned stuff based on my first series, how to shoot and frame things, make sure I pay attention at settings, how you sound, got uh, that cat, uh, the fluffy thing for microphone as well for that trip, so that helped. And uh, the quality improved, but not drastically. GoPro, I still had GoPro 4, eh, very crappy quality. Uh, GoPro 7 right now, yeah, yeah, it's better, it's better colors, better everything. But you can still tell when it's a GoPro footage. I hate GoPro footage, it's always fisheye and I try to remove that fisheye look. Um, so I came back from that Baja uh, trip, which was absolutely amazing. And uh, the sketchy thing about that trip was, it's not so much being out there and off-road, it's the people factor, because Baja relatively is safe, but things happen in Mexico, especially mainland, uh, when you're gringo, whatever. Uh, you know, you, things happen. There's crazy stories out there. Even, for example, the guy on my first uh, Baja trip that I bumped into German bicyclist traveling from Alaska to Argentina, just on a bicycle. You know, like as I published uh, half a year later uh, my series, in the episode where I bumped into him and did a little like chat interview with him, uh, after I published that episode, f two, three months later, some Mexican guy replied in the comment and gave a link that that guy was killed. As soon as he hit mainland Mexico, uh, he handed out to some Polish guy and, uh, uh, you know, one of them got shot, another guy got decapitated. Who knows why? Uh, there was nothing to take from them, not expen no expensive vehicle, nothing. We were just bicycling, had like little phone, GPS thing and that's kind of it. But they both ended up dead, so uh, it's, uh, it's just to highlight that it's not just some stories out there that someone talks about, this is real. And this is the person I actually met and uh, then he was no more. So um, that was the sketchy factor about Baja, being alone completely in a shiny vehicle. Uh, but actually the more I talked to, like uh, at BC Overland Rally place, uh, you know, uh, 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 gatherings, uh, people that traveled uh, Central America, South America and kind of did that whole route, uh, everyone says that, you know, actually, in a way, the flashiness works towards you. Because when you have a very unique rig, very, the logic is you have very unique rig, very flashy, chances are locals, banditos, whatever, not gonna want to deal with you because even if they, I don't know, kill you, steal your thing or whatever, uh, it's so unique that they're gonna be sore in the eyes. So if like federales come in or federal police in one of those countries, whatever, right? It's it's gonna be hard to sell the rig or do something with it. Uh, so it kind of works, suppose based on the what they say towards you. Uh, whereas, for example, they've seen someone in beaten up Volkswagen Westphalia get stopped right away, pretty much everywhere. Uh, right, especially like if you have plastered, oh, your social media, this and that, you know, like public person, probably will not want to deal with you. Uh, not worth the trouble, sort of. Uh, so that was that uh, test, uh, uh, and uh, it was sketchy uh, a few times uh, in there, but uh, I absolutely love Baha. I love Baha. I wish I could return this Christmas, but I can't. Uh, the Baha trip wasn't supposed to be too off but I kind of realized that uh, 
um, you know, there's going to be some remote places, so for sure I need to pack fuel, who knows. Uh, I've been worried there is a stretch, and there is one where there is no fuel for about uh, eh, 200, 300 kilometers or something, uh, but it's fine. Well, you just need to make sure you gas up, you know, before and after that stretch. Um, there is some couple of sketchy uh, off-road uh, scenarios in there, but nothing too serious, nothing compared to 36 day over land. And that was my most off-roady series and things I've done up to this moment since I've been running my YouTube channel and had the truck. However, even with no real challenging roads, the roof rack, my previous one before this one, uh, that was on Thule, uh, uh, cross, like two Thule crossbars, and the tower which probably if I had three crossbars or four with that weight whatever I had probably would have been just fine uh, and actually everyone advises if you do some kind of roof rack and you plan on carrying stuff one thing when you're just going by forestry roads flat ones or in the city and now thing when you're doing this or constant board washes bumps uh, all that weight shifting so you need to have at least three crossbars, ideally four. They recommend, completely agree, hey, happened to me. Um, but after it happened, I still had reservations. Oh, what if I do uh, an, like another Thule rack system uh, on top of uh, canopy uh, with three or four crossbars? I was like, I'm just not sure how, str uh, how strong that would be still. Uh, that's why I went for this much heavier setup, way more expensive setup, uh, right? Because it's all custom fabricated and we, they worked on that thing for two weeks. So you just picture how much money that was, a lot. Uh, so yeah, after coming back from Baja, lost the roof rack, they did this. Uh, then, then around June, I had a, a, what seemed like transmission issue uh, and map sensor. So it's a mix, who knows, things happen, new transmission, uh, refabricated one uh, to keep costs down, uh, negotiated with dealership uh, because it's, to me it seemed like the substitution of transmission wasn't needed based on circumstances. Uh, if you dig in my vlog videos section, uh, you'll see like car stalling video, you can check that out, uh, kind of talk about it uh, as it happened and like afterwards as well. Um, um, yeah, vlog play playlist. So then, I, because this happened, I was gonna, well, I was gonna go uh, 2018 August to Arctic Circle, you know, took to took the whole dumpster highway, uh, but the whole what happened took to lots of money for me, and that's when I'm like, no, I can't afford gas and all that to go that far. Uh, how do I still go somewhere for a month but keep costs down? So I decided to do the Oregon trip and this way I could also take Because uh, the temperatures were moderate end of August September and you're not going up north or whatever or the need to go uh, To California my ferrets are banned in California can't have them in California or uh, Going with them from Mexican very exotic pets. So I have no idea what like if I would be stopped at the border and that's it um, so I'm like, hey, how about I check out Scout, Oregon, which I already traveled through coastal areas before, but like really just enjoy it, you know, for a month and touch up some Washington, uh, kind of more like van life -y, uh, style, uh, as in not too rushed, uh, a little bit more chill, nothing like 36 day overland where I constantly every day go, go, go huge distances, both trails and highways connecting them. Uh, I slowed down a little bit on uh, uh, my first Baja trip. Uh, there's been a couple of places where we stayed for a full day, not moving, or uh, wh while I was with guys, and even later myself. So, and then I wanted to slow down even more, because that whole adrenaline rush after getting the track initially and building it out, it started to wear off. Uh, whereas before it was like, just go, 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 go. I need more, 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 more. And I started to realize that. Yeah, I'm seeing more, but I want to enjoy those places. I want to stick around. I want to do a little hike somewhere in the bushes, something, pick some stuff. I don't know. Do some fishing, climb, whatever. Just sit and people watch other campers or views or whatever. 
right? Just just savor those moments. So I kind of wanted to slow down for that one, and uh, that's why I called it uh, uh, Oregon cruising, something like that, van lifestyle. There's a play playlist of that. Uh, you can check it in uh, this corner here. Uh, then, of course, the Christmas time would come, and it just so happens that at my work, uh, my whole work is off for 10 days. Uh, and if I add some more vacation days that I have, or compensation time for doing overtime throughout the year, uh, I can have up to three weeks, almost three and a half weeks, so almost another month vacation. That's how I've been able to do uh, one month vacation because I have four week vacation throughout the year in general, uh, plus that time period. Um, because I've been working at the company for like many, many years, 15 years or something. So, you know, with seniority, you get more vacation time. Uh, started with two weeks, like any other people in Canada. So that was a nice little trip, uh, taking out ferrets as well. It was first time actually, like sure, I took them camping here and there, but to live with them in that small space uh, for a month, two of them, uh, you know, very like little babies. It's not like a dog or a cat, you need to uh, you know, if you're not paying attention, they can get lost and so on. Like, it's not that they want to run away, they're too domesticated, but they're curious animals, so they'll wander off. And uh, I've seen online that sometimes they come back and so on, but sometimes not. So, like, I didn't want to experiment that. So, uh, it's lo it was lots of babysitting, one at a time too, because it just becomes too much hassle. One guy goes this way, wants to go that way, and it's like, oh my god. Uh, yeah, I, I really dig that one. I also wanted to get away a little bit from uh, just cruising around and checking places, but actually start doing stuff. And you probably notice some uh, social media posts that I'm doing lately, uh, or like, for example, I started this video, right? Like, oh, I, in the morning I picked some mushrooms. Uh, or for example, I wanna fish a little bit later today. I just wanna stay in places more and uh, try to do a little bit more of uh, living off the land, uh, you know slowly kind of learn so if time comes when i'm full timing i'm not so much dependent on fully shopping in stores once in a while to load my thing i can maybe have some uh, vegetables and stuff and the rest i could maybe pick some berries you know do some fishing who knows maybe at the time do some hunting um, and kind of get some protein meat and whatever this way right live off the land partially at least um, Maybe at some point I'll get spear gun, uh, uh, the wetsuit, so I can do a little bit of diving and spear fishing, actually. But those things cost money quite a bit. I didn't really research, but what people told me it cost quite a bit. So I was like, nah, it's okay, I pass for now. Uh, but I, but eventually I want spear gun and uh, wetsuit. Yeah. So if I go down south, whatever, even here up north, um, you know, can do some underwater hunting. That would be cool, maybe have a little GoPro and show some of that. Uh, so yeah, again, Christmas came, uh, was coming, and I'm like, where do I go? So before this whole overland thing started for me, before the truck, right, just as I bought the truck, actually, 2017, uh, 2016 November, right, that's when I got it, and I flew to Baja with my father to do, well, you know, rent a house, and we rented the car there to explore a little bit. So that was my Christmas 2016, and then I came back, uh, and that's when I started doing YouTube channel, started working on rig, preparing for 36 day overland series, uh, that whole trip. Uh, but before that, on Christmases and so on, I used to just fly different places. I think year before I flew to Thailand, uh, year before I think Mexico, year before uh, I think Costa Rica again, but that time I was with my mother. I think year before it was like Dominican Republic, and things of that nature like i used to escape on christmas time somewhere south and warm um, some germany trips back in the past and so on and so on some european trips uh, so it was always flight uh, but with this now i'm like oh, i don't want to fly i want to like cruise I, this is my little apartment I, this is how you get to see uh, places better not stay in some hotel or you know con concrete jungle in some city uh, uh, you can kind of decide wherever you want to go and just go right and you have everything you need on board it's not like flying in rent a vehicle and unless it's like full-on outfitted vehicle that's gonna cost you tons of money to rent 
it's just gonna be like okay i got a jeep but now let's say if you want to go someplace and you don't know kind of need some max tracks just in case uh, what about power how i'm gonna charge cameras fins phones all that while camping is there gonna be solar no solar so just the more i think about like oh fly in and rent like a, a van or something and just sleep throw a sleeping bag in the back uh, the more i kind of like ah it's just not the same it's not the same when you have your own rig built out that's how i can see some people how they do it uh, to travel the world while having jobs is uh, you know they travel for a month somewhere some different country park it there return work 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 next year come back pick it up continue next country right and kind of traverse throughout years like that which might become an option for me too potentially uh, but that would mean i don't have a rig here to do camping to get out every weekend but i'm i'm kind of used to now i have this year 2019 i've only been at home on the weekends three times uh, i started camping this season uh, end of february and uh, i'm gonna end it middle of november roughly uh, so there's gonna be a couple of months to uh, kind of catch up on video editing this and that. it's too cold it's just not enjoyable i hate cold so uh, it becomes just not enjoyable and in that time frame that's that's it i only been three times at home uh, on the weekends uh, so that but that's how i found my balance i edit these videos like uh, uh, you know all these series is actually on my phone i transfer data and while camping in the evenings i do that stuff and it's part of the reason why i also solo sometimes i kind of want to join someone but it means i will not get any work done on my videos for youtube uh, that weekend because if i'm hanging out with people drinking uh, i become unfocused obviously you want to hang out and you know you're not working on videos if, and uh, it's kind of hard during weekdays to do that come home from work tired right you want to kind of watch some tv whatever for a couple of hours by that time you kind of veg ve veg out and you know uh, don't really want to work sometimes i do but it, it's kind of hard after work so weekends is when i do this stuff and uh, to do it i need to be solo basically whenever so the roof and then the skeleton got built at B big country customs uh, it's a it's a shop in bc with big uh, reputation for doing custom jobs uh, they may be pricier than some guy in the garage but they have reputation they do quality stuff um, you you get what you pay for and that's why I didn't want to chip out it's it's a, it's a very elaborate setup it's not uh, it probably wouldn't be a good idea to do it with some guy in a garage for half price or whatever and then just for it to fall apart again at some point so the guy that actually did my that physically worked on my roof rack was Mexican Rod and uh, I kind of mentioned that oh 2018 Christmas I'm gonna be returning to Baja because I liked it so much and uh, on my first series I only reached La Paz I wanted to fully cover the whole Baja and actually hug a little bit of uh, uh, southern uh, uh, western coast uh, so Pacific South Pacific there uh, and he kind of like oh uh, I uh, he immigrated to Canada like five or six years ago well now it's probably seven uh, he's like, oh, I'm kind of interested. I got family, right? Like wife, kids. Uh, let's talk about it later. And we talked, connected, and he, uh, he's kind of like, yeah, ready to go. Although they couldn't cover the whole distance how I wanted, or had enough vacation times like me, uh, or money too. Even though I was already stretched at that time as well, I was possibly was not gonna go to Baja because traveling these distances in this guy, uh, it's lots of gas. Uh, right that just pay lots and lots for gas uh, it's just a plus investment in the truck basically this past three years been so expensive for me with all these trips of like buying camera gear right drone all these things add up right if i wasn't running youtube channel i wouldn't have never gotten this camera i would have never gotten any of those drones on the like personally without running youtube channel i simply wouldn't need those things i wasn't interested but i'm running youtube now so i needed to improve uh, my videos the quality my equipment so 
it also takes less time for me to edit things and try to correct them so as I shoot things they just come off being nice so I don't waste all that time in post to try to deal with all these GoPros and all that stuff and bad microphones and so on um, so yeah we talked and uh, we went on this trip and that's actually the series that I'm gonna be doing right now and this time yeah I went fully all the way to uh, south, Cabo uh, I wanted to touch one peninsula within peninsula area but things happened with my tire carrier you'll see in those episodes uh, it was I guess a start uh, and then came back from this trip and sometime this spring already 2019 spring uh, the tire carrier actually snapped like where it's sitting in the hitch um, kind of welding it and so on was I guess I could do it but I was already thinking because about two years on uh, three of those trips videos three series uh, I was on 37 inch tires 17 inch rim 37 inch tires but I was already comp contemplating to go down to the 35s easier on track easier on training or differentials all that stuff and uh, you, you know with 6 inch lift whatever it's enough clearance and uh, I gained I put after this roof rack and then the skeleton I had to put uh, airbags in because I was sagged because of weight so much uh, it was basically dangerous to drive so right away I put airbags and they are airlift air right no airlift air right 5000 uh, version with bump stops inside so if if airbag blows there's still bump stops uh, so that's like the most premium version you can get and also remote control right so i can control from a uh, cab uh, if i want to lower inflate deflate obviously full inflate for highways so track doesn't wobble side to side but it means suspension is very steep on the back uh, so going by forest roads or doing obstacles, right? It's it's like super steep. Uh, so for off road, I lower it down to like by about half, right? And that gives back the like articulation and softens the ride. But uh, you know, obviously sags my back a little bit. So after that Baja trip, yeah, in spring that happened, uh, and that's when I kind of wanted to wait. I'm like, okay, how about I get 35 inch tires and see if I can fit the spare under track bed like how it is stock and if i can then then i don't need tire carrier why what's the point and plus i have this super nice roof i can mount anything in there however i want and that was exactly the design is to utilize it however you want at some point when you decide what you want to do with it so i waited tire fits maybe about an inch distance from a uh, track bar uh, in the back uh, so good enough and like sweet uh, I don't need it that's it uh, relocated all my roto packs uh, I have five four, four gallon ones uh, on my last trip like this Vancouver Island trip I just did a, what a month ago I only took three I left two at home it's like there's no giant enough distances for me to need all these packs uh, and right now too I just kind of left them like for camping season I, I usually would take them off just leave one maybe filled up for the winter or whatever but even right now there are like three of them they're empty they're like on three locks the lock plus two chains so it's like no one's taking it um, and plus if they want to take it they would need to climb to do whatever and then it would trigger alarm then I would get a notification on my phone they'll I'll know it'll come out and like I'll kill you so yeah, it kind of worked out the timing. Let's switch to 35s, getting rid of tire carrier, relocating things to the roof, uh, tr trash a roof. I for a while I didn't know where to put my garbage. I gotten used to it before tr I had trash a roof. Uh, on that first Baja trip video, I used to uh, carry my garbage in the front seat, uh, but it became annoying after time. So now trash a roof just sits behind the box on the roof already tested on this month trip works wonders absolutely awesome yeah you need to climb to put garbage in there uh, but still I can save like week worth of garbage in the roof no problem whatsoever right weight is not really an issue for the roof rack itself it it can take any weight you want uh, it's the track itself that's limited on the weight 
Um, and um, uh, because all this stuff had a toll on my finances, right? Uh, all these things happening over the past three years, equipment, mm, truck, trips, mm, gas, uh, maintenance too, right? You need almost twice more oil when you change compared to, let's say, a Jeep. Uh, you know, twice, <laughs> twice a month, pretty much everything liquids because everything's bigger. Uh, so things cost more maintaining a truck versus a smaller car or a CV or Forerunner or whatever people use. Um, it just all adds up, and that's why I decided, yeah, I'm gonna skip on the whole Arctic Circle again. Uh, how about I explore my backyard? I like I only been on Vancouver Island a few few times in my life, a uh, couple of days. Uh, it just wasn't enough to really explore and I'm kind of like, okay, Vancouver Island will be my thing. I'll really try to check as much as I can, plus visit some Gulf Islands scattered around to, to see what life is like over there, right? Uh, and that's the series that I just uh, shot uh, this August 2019 and hopefully I'll get to it maybe around uh, early spring to mid spring because the second Bachet trip uh, it's about mm, 25 episodes or so it's gonna take a while but because we're shot on this camera much better sound the way I shoot things now is optimized for me to edit faster better uh, right so I don't have to deal with long clips uh, long data store like big data storage and so on so it's done in a way it's gonna be much faster for me to produce episodes uh, with that series and should be also just as fast for series I just shot with Gulf Island shipping. So that's kind of a timeline so and the explanation as to why certain things even though they're old they're like just been published now and obviously in between all those series I, I make uh, videos of like current things like this vlog or BC Overland Rally, or maybe cruising whip, doing like Whipso Trail with some guys, uh, or in spring doing uh, exploring a little bit North BC with some guys, right? It just kind of makes sense to put those uh, things uh, as they come up because they're not some big involved series. It's just kind of like boom, done. But it creates that sort of interlaced uh, weird timeline, right? In one video you see track has tire carrier, all this stuff. Maybe like an antenna, whatever. All of a sudden, next video you see like, oh, there's like the antenna. There's all this roof stuff happening. Uh, hopefully, for you guys that uh, return to my channel uh, regularly to check my stuff. Now it kind of like clears timelines, and also what to expect. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next August uh, 2020 trip. Uh, it will depend on finances. Actually, I'm not even sure what I'm gonna do this Christmas. I was thinking just to save costs maybe travel to Washington state and just just chill on the coast. It's gonna be crappy, it's gonna be cold, at least no snow, but it's gonna be cold. It's Christmas by the by Pacific Ocean. Uh, but I was just thinking like razor climbing, whatever fishing, and obviously half, half a day I would just hang inside with heater or candles, whatever, just editing videos, watching some movies and so on. Uh, but at least portion of the day I would still be able to be outside, do some stuff, you know, it's not like sitting at home. And at the same time, it's not huge driving distance, like driving to some south of Arizona or whatever, right? It's just like, boom, little stretch to Washington from BC, and that's it, you're cruising. Just kind of maybe switching places, like maybe throughout uh, 12 days or two weeks uh, here and there. So that's what I was thinking, how to still get out, do stuff, and uh, uh, keep the cost down. Uh, and then uh, next August, I'm not sure what it's gonna be. Uh, I was thinking maybe Trans uh, America Trail, but it's a full month involvement. It's big distances, lots of gas. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I really not sure what about next August. But hopefully this guys clarified everything for you. What's coming up? What happened? And a little bit of everything about each series. Uh, what we're like. So see you guys in my first Baja uh, episode opener. Well, actually not so fast. So I did pay the price for that river crossing. Actually on the way back, yeah, I went uh, gentler, slower, and the water didn't go as high. Uh, it still went in the hood, like it's still high, but it didn't splash over top of the hood. And uh, uh, when I opened the hood afterwards, uh, it was just little sprinkles here and there. 
uh, nothing like the first time where it's like I saw water covers, you know, different things, different parts. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Just need to go a little slower, that balance. But uh, pretty much, uh, well, I didn't notice it that day because I didn't have to really deflate inflate things for my airbags. Uh, the day after when I arrived at Hot Springs, I tried to back up, I needed to inflate. Uh, airbags and the whole system started crapping out uh, so I got this remote here right, and probably chances are it's see it has BLOC so it's like block something's blocked uh, basically what I tried to do here right I disconnect the fuse from here and it kind of helps to reset the system serve the pumping still happening even right now if I press uh, the compressor is working uh, on the way out of camping I crawled uh, under the truck I inspected uh, the whole line the whole connection of uh, solenoid the, uh, uh, the compressor the, the lines visually everything seems to be fine uh, and it's not leak because if it was a leak it would say oh blah 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 like it's some kind of something blockage so i kind of figured that oh i should disconnect uh, uh you know the fuse uh, that's powering the whole uh, airbag system if i do some deep river cross in the future totally forgot to do it this time and i'm not sure if this has anything to do with it or not maybe even if i disconnected it uh, water can get into like the solenoid or somewhere and bust the system i i don't know <clears throat> under my back wheels here so this is the compressor this is here uh where this right here is the solenoid thing disconnected connected um so it seems throughout the whole highway drive the tire yeah the, the airbag pressure is holding up it's a little crooked right now but i think it's because uh, the, the ground here it's usually always this because the ground is not straight fully so it tends to hit a little bit uh, or maybe it deflated a little bit I, it's it's super hard to tell what's going on the, the yeah this thing here so uh when i you know i tried all kinds of things already and uh if i do this sometimes if i press it just keeps going 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 compressor and uh it, i almost feel like it's going 100 but it doesn't show it here uh, and then that time at camping i went down and it just kept going down 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 on one airbag until it went zero fully so uh and it says in instructions don't let it go to zero so what i figured i i climbed a big rock with the front wheel to make sure that uh, this side uh the tire is kind of hanging in the air almost right so I, because the airbags for me are sitting in the cradle that's how i get the articulation so the airbag was lifted completely out of cradle and that's where I pumped, started pumping for that side and actually got it working again fully but uh, it's been glitchy since then, the whole thing uh, so well, if I try right now you can see, let's, let's say 1 psi up no, 2 anything? nothing? Okay, nothing at all right now, but if I reset, so I unplugged the fuse and plugged back, let's see if something's gonna happen now. Anything at all? Anything at all? No sounds now. Okay, so now, oh, there we go. But it's glitched. I'm not even sure right now if it's showing correct. See, like, it keeps pumping, but there's nothing to pump. 
nothing to pump at all. But see, like it keeps going, and I'm not sure what's happening right now. Like, is it going actually up to 100 or not, or not enough power? No idea. Well, I guess it's stripped to North Shore because those guys uh, installed these things, they're specialized. Uh, they're specialized installers of uh, airlift systems and Firestone as well. Um, so they should be able to troubleshoot what's not working uh, and maybe order specifically just that part. Uh, I wanted to do tire rotation anyway uh, few, for a few weeks now. So it just makes sense that I go there because of it especially now. Uh, do tire rotation, right? So we'll take tires off. There is some squeaking going on on the left side of the truck each time I drive and it's increased. I'm not sure what this squeaking is. Could be dirt in, in the brakes, who knows, I don't know, but it's increased. So while tires are off, check for that. I kind of wanted to check on uh, brake pads as well, they're alive. Plus I had that uh, misalignment issue for a while there and so on. Like I want to see like, oh, are brakes wearing equally on inside and outside, you know, uh, just to see what the state is and uh, besides that yeah so that airlift as well and there is something else oh and ABS my ABS uh, well for for a week now it didn't come on but a while back past couple of weeks or even month sometimes it would come in and go away after a while until last weekend rain came on five times on high-speed highway uh, and I could feel, you know, one of the wheels, something, you know, like a little jerk uh, when it happened. And then, so yeah, after five times of coming on and off, it went permanent uh, with traction control off. That's when I had to stop at the truck stop um, and I actually reset all the codes and everything got reset. Uh, so there is something going on. I'm thinking it's speed sensor and it does say each time message like, oh, front front wheel front left wheel center uh, sensor so I'm thinking busted sensor or it's about to die or something's going on so while tire rotation they may as well check on that hopefully they're equipped to diagnose speed sensors or whatever like this should be it's off-road shop but anyway ciao guys hey comrades don't forget to hit that like button and also leave a comment and if you haven't subscribed yet you should by hitting that subscription button and also bell notification next to it so you can actually get my video updates both in notification and your video feed and as well you can support this channel if you like my videos through paypal or patreon in the links down below or just after this video